Uh, obviously, uh, the last time I, I think uh, we spoke was uh, the uh, a day or two into practice. Uh, I, I know it was early because we practiced in July. And, and now we've been uh, at it uh, 15 days. We've made, uh, I, I think probably the biggest thing I could say about this group is they've, they've been very energetic. Uh, they've come to work every day, uh, responsive in terms of being, having a good attitude, a good work ethic, good leadership. Um, and obviously we've, we've tried to press them and put them in situations as much as we could uh, to make it as difficult as we can on them uh, to prepare them for the season. And uh, they have responded in, in a big way, and I think that is a credit to the leadership of, of the guys like Trey Williams and, and uh, Trey Matthews and, and Stephen Roberts and guys like that, Dontavious Russell, uh, Marlon Davison. There, there's, just, there's a lot of guys that really have good leadership. Now, that having been said, we, we've made progress. We've made good progress, uh, but we are a work in progress. To, to say the least. And, and a little bit of that reason is that uh, we have a lot of guys back. We've got a lot of guys back that's played good football. But uh, we have a lot of young guys that we would like to see help us. Uh, and, and so we are actually working them uh, as much as we can. Uh, and sometimes even sprinkling them in with the, the first group and the second group, not just pr playing them together in the third group. We've done a, a good bit of that. And uh, they've, they've responded. I think it, it helps them to play with older guys sometimes to gain confidence, to really see the, how it's done. So in that regard, we've done that. I think the, the biggest thing that, that we've got to do is just keep working and, and eliminating mistakes, getting on the same page communication-wise. Uh, and then fundamentally, we've got, to, we've got to keep pressing on our fundamentals. But it still goes back to that we're demanding and commanding every day that they give great effort that they play with physical and mental toughness, uh, and that they tackle. Now, that having been said, every one of us in this room knows the new rules. Uh, there's not as much tackling in fall camp as there used to be, and for good reason. I understand that. But it does. it is difficult to, to bring that along as fast as you used to could. With that, I'll open it up. Well, we've... Uh, Pretty much done every one of them. You know, Truesdale, Alex. Uh, I mean, I, I'm going to go down the laundry list. And you're going to say, well, he didn't give me an answer because he said every one of them. But we have, every one of them. Uh, I think probably the, the guy that just because of some of the dings that we have, uh, Jordan Peters, uh, uh, Trayvon Leonard, because of some of the dings we have, nothing nothing serious or anything, but some of the little, little minor things that we've had, that's created some days which they got a pretty good load. Uh, TD and Big Cat. Uh, there's been a couple of times, you know, where their day workload went up and they got to do that. But we've, we've actually done them all. So. TD's worked out of some at linebacker, some kind of as a pass rusher too. What have you seen him having to kind of take on a little bit of both of those roles? Well, we've actually limited it. You know, we've, uh, you know, we've got coaches in our room. Uh, you know, Rodney, Travis, Greg, myself, at some point in time have all been around where you had a young guy that had a skill set and how to, put that in a box for them and not overload them otherwise. So obviously, uh, you know, at this point in time, we're working more with him going toward the ball than running away from the ball. Ronnie was talking about Jeff having to learn to play on first and second down. Same thing for Paul. But at that flex position, they both have to do that. And Jeff's probably done a little bit better than Paul so far. Just what do you see from two of them to be every down play? Well, Jeff, you know, all defensive end love to rush the passer. That's a given. They love to rush the passer. So what we've what we've done is we've really created situations where they have to have to rush the passer in in conversion, meaning first and second down is a pass. You got to trigger and rush the passer, but then you know put them in situations where they've got to play physical run edge edge play. Uh, Jeff has has migrated really well with it. Uh, you know Paul's a little bit different in that you know he has not been here very long, uh, and then the time he's been here has not been able to participate. So we've only had a little brief window of, of coaching him, but he's, he's uh, matriculated well. What have you seen from Richard McBride to find a role in kind of a crowded linebacker? Well, you know what? Uh, it's amazing. In one year, 
that wasn't the question. Uh, and I wouldn't say it's crowded because I don't think you can have enough good players. Um, he has he has really grasped the concepts of the defense. Uh, he's he's playing extremely hard. He's confident, uh, and is, is getting getting the respect of his teammates uh, in terms of his play. Well, I assume you're a, you're asking about first and second down because obviously you can move you can move defensive ends inside on on third down and put other guys there. Well, it's a it's it's rare. I mean, you go across college football, probably the biggest difference across college football is the defensive line play. And really, what people are saying is not the edge rushers. There's a lot of good edge rushers out there. They're probably the biggest difference in college football is those guys that's got those A and B gaps, and uh, they're hard to find. So you got to develop them. We're fortunate in that we've got a guy that has a great track record of developing defensive linemen. Uh, and uh, the physicality, technique, and, and the attitude it takes to play in there, because it's a hard job. You know, we've said before, you got 300 pounds on this here and 300 pounds on this here. You know, put one hand here and one hand there and hold that point. Uh, that's not a lot of fun. It takes a lot of work. And so you got to develop them. Uh, but, uh, you know, we've got a good group. And we've got answers to how we can move guys and situate guys uh, if need be. How have you been working and rotating, you know, Jamel Dean and Andrew Aristeos, and where have they been working and how have they been working? Well, we've had a little bit of an issue there. You know, I, I'm not – obviously, I don't give injury reports. The head coach does that. But obviously, he's given you some injury reports. I'm not sure which ones. Uh, but I think probably the biggest thing is we don't have anybody back there that we're not going to have available. But we've had little nicks this day, this, that day, that, uh, where we've had to be cautious and be careful with them. And so we've created some issues in terms of, okay, what are we going to do today? And this guy's got to work at this and this guy's got to work at that. But then the bright side of that is we're kind of at the end of it now, and they've kind of really – uh, coming out the other side where they've rotated in a lot of different ways and played a lot of different things, and they feel pretty comfortable with it. Uh, so we've, uh, you know, Dean's been uh, primarily corner, but safety is a possibility. Uh, Denson is corner, star, safety, and on and on and on. We've, we've created that. Uh, we're not going to be so complicated they can't play it. Uh, we'll, we'll simplify so we can get the best, best guys out there. Right. Being pretty physical. What, what do you kind of expect from him this season? To be a dominant player and do his job. I mean, uh, that's the that's the quick answer. But at the end of the day, playing corner is a hard job. It's a hard job in this league. It's a hard job at the next league up. Uh, he's long. He's physical. Uh, you know, if he if he gets in front of you and gets his hands on you, he can he can uh, he can make that clock that the quarterback has be affected by how the guy released off of him and mess up the timing of the route combinations. And he's really, really good at that uh, because he is so long and strong and he's really, really smart. So that's there. And then he has the physical ability uh, to do it. Uh, I have not really counted it. Uh, it would be – it'd be getting close to that. It'd be getting close to that. Now, obviously, that's situational. But, you know, there's a group of four any situation. And then there's two more, possibly three more, that are situational. As a coordinator, how comforting – I know it's the word comforting, but having four guys that have had – hey, we put any of those four guys in any situation, how, how big is that for you knowing that when those guys are in the game, well, I think the biggest thing is it's kind of like saying you got a quarterback. You know, when you've got a quarterback that you know how he's going to react. And, I mean, for example, we were not ready for this, but uh, we were in a scrimmage the other day, and, and you know, they lined up in a set that, that we had not really been exposed to this fall camp. And uh, Trey Williams makes a check. Uh, the problem is we hadn't put the check in yet, and we had one, guy, and we had one young guy out there. But, I mean, it was just instantly he just spit it out, 
Well, that was good if he'd have been out there with all the everybody except Jordan Peters was out there, and he's like this, you know. You know, we hadn't got to that installation yet. That actually went in yesterday, so he was about three days ahead on the installation, and we had a young guy looking like coach. I didn't know what he's talking about. It's okay. It's all right. Uh, so at that that he's quarterbacking it. You know. Well, I mean, obviously he, he plays the money position. Uh, I mean, and that, that is a primary cover position. It has to be. He's really smart. He, he's, he, he understands the concepts of what we're trying to do. Now, when we go to the pressure game, uh, we have the ability to, uh, to add him to the rush in different ways. And uh, he's, he, he's got a good rush ability. Uh, well, I can't comment on that because then I'd be commenting. But I can answer it this way for you. Uh, they will be, you know, I have every reason to believe that they'll be ready for the start of the season. Well, if I, if that's the case, then I don't think one week's practice is enough to get ready for a season. And so I think we're near to it. What does Jordan Peters bring in specifically as a player? You probably don't know this year. Pardon me? He's a smart guy. He's a highly competitive, uh, and uh, he, he's just you know he, he doesn't rattle. He's he's very calm. He, he gives you the, the chance to play multiple positions too. I know that's tough for a young guy. Well, for yeah, for a young guy, he's got the ability to you know, and at one day he'll he'll be star safety. But right now we're just trying to keep him more in place. Right. Well, he's a big man. He's strong. Uh, he's got ability, or he, he, he wouldn't be here. Uh, he's in the in the rotation uh, and and working hard, getting better every day. So, uh, as a lot of young guys, he's a work in progress. But uh, he it, that's just because of youth and inexperience. It's not because of uh, necessarily ability. Now, obviously, we compete every day to see who's going to be in what spot. So things change, you know. Uh, you, you may be one one day and two the next day. Uh, you may be one one day and you may have two in front of you the next day. That's just the way it works. That's a good thing, and he's adding to that competitiveness in that core. Kevin, is there a defensive tackle beyond Derrick Brown, John Davis Russell, and Andy Williams that you feel comfortable in putting in there on first and second down right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do I have to answer that? I'm not going to. <laughs> there is, though. There is. Kevin, uh, Georgia Southern, because I know you and Rodney, all three types of coaches, talk about that you're just not 100% sure what Georgia Southern's going to run. They've got different coordinators. Are they going to have a public practice on Friday? Are you guys going to send anybody over there to take a look? No, it's a, it, that wouldn't be – that would make too much news. Uh, but if they've got a public practice, they got guys like you guys, we won't have to see anybody. You guys are there. <laughs> you want to go? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't think the commissioner would like that too well. Anything else? All right, All right thanks, guys.